In this video, you'll discover the biggest keto mistakes that are ruining your results. There's a lot of people interested in the ketogenic diet and they're interested for the right reasons. They're looking to lose weight, they're looking to improve their overall health, or maybe you're looking to go and reverse a health condition, which the ketogenic diet is incredibly powerful for. But the thing is, is that there's a lot of traps, if you will, that people are falling into, a lot of common mistakes. You know, you hear about the ketogenic diet from your friends, you start following it, but then it just doesn't work for you. So that's why in this video, we're gonna talk about the biggest keto mistakes that are going to ruin your results. And so stick around to the end so that you don't fall into this trap so that that you can improve your health naturally. Before we get started, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and join our notification community. That way I can help you excel your health and your life. Let's go ahead and kick this off and talk about the ketogenic diet briefly because one of the things I find clinically is that a lot of people who tell me they're on the ketogenic diet, they're following a like a high fat diet, but they're really not on the ketogenic diet. And I don't say that to disparage anybody, but here's the thing is if you're putting the effort in to follow the ketogenic diet, I want you to get results. It's like if I was following a workout plan in order to put on muscle, but yet like the workout plan wasn't going to do that, I would want someone to let me know. So that's why we're going to really get into this and help you get the best results. Now, the ketogenic diet is a high fat diet, moderate protein and low carb diet. During the ketogenic diet, it's very important to eat lots of good leafy greens, okay? So it's gonna be a, a diet that's high in green leafy vegetables. You're gonna consume less than 50 grams of carbohydrates a day. Some people, depending on their insulin resistance and what they have going on, they need to consume um, all the way down to like 20 grams of, of uh, carbohydrates per day. It is a diet that when you are following the ketogenic diet, you are in the state of ketosis, okay? So if you are not in the state of ketosis, then you're probably not doing it right, okay? We wanna make sure that if you wanna follow the ketogenic diet, you you are doing it correctly so that you can get into the state of ketosis to get the benefits. Otherwise, you're just on a low carb diet, which is healthy too, but it's just not the ketogenic diet. Now, it is going to allow your body to start burning fat for energy, which is very powerful for people who are looking to lose weight, reverse fatty liver, reverse uh, insulin resistance. It's a much cleaner fuel source for your body and it offers a lot of health benefits. I mean, the ketogenic diet is just being more and more researched every single day. And as a result, they're finding that it helps with so many different conditions like heart conditions, epilepsy, um, you name it across the board. The ketogenic diet is becoming more and more uh, well-researched and, and, and really when we look at it, it's more powerful than we ever thought it was way back in the day. So really awesome. That's in a nutshell what the ketogenic diet is. Let's talk about the first thing that people make a mistake with. And the first thing is gonna be cutting carbs too fast. So let's say you're thinking about starting the ketogenic diet you're interested in it. And one of the things that you do is you decide that you're going to go from, uh, you know, how you're eating and you, you put a stake in the ground on this particular day, you're starting the ketogenic diet. But how do you think your body's going to react if you're eating somewhere around like two, 300 grams of carbohydrates per day and you're eating sugar and you have lots of caffeine and then all of a sudden you go into the ketogenic diet. It is an absolute shock for you. So what I recommend is that you don't particularly put a stake in the ground on whatever day that is that you want to make the shift, but you actually start transitioning slowly because, you know, even though you're going to a healthier diet than where you're currently at, one of the things that will happen is your body will react negatively. And it's just like, you know, coming off of sugar, right? It causes headaches, it causes cravings, it causes all kinds of issues. Same thing's going to happen if you're coming off of a high carb diet, going to a low carb diet. So you want to kind of taper those carbs down and start increasing the fats and, and that sort of thing. Because also what can happen is you can end up with a really upset stomach just going and increasing fats like that overnight. So make sure that when you transition into the ketogenic diet, you don't do it too abruptly. Number two on our list is going to be electrolyte imbalances. When you start the ketogenic diet, due to the lower carb intake, you tend to flush a lot of water out. With that water goes a lot of electrolytes. Now, if you're someone who has an electrolyte imbalance, you'll start to get all different types of symptoms. You can get like heart, uh, heart uh, arrhythmias, you can get uh, muscle twitching, you can get a lot of cramps. And so the thing is, is that uh, with the ketogenic diet, you can potentially get those electrolyte imbalances that are very uncomfortable. It can disrupt your sleep, it can uh, cause issues with your blood pressure, it can cause so many different issues we want to make sure that we are keeping our electrolytes balanced. Now, a lot of people in our keto community use an electrolyte powder, which I'll put in the description below. You also can just start increasing your sea salt, 
uh, intake as well. So put lots of sea salt on your food. And you know, it, typically it's a good thing that you crave on the ketogenic diet is more sodium. And that's because your body's going to be flushing out those electrolytes. So if you use a good sea salt, it's going to have a lot of different minerals in it. Very good for you when you're on the ketogenic diet. So don't let electrolyte imbalances get the best of you because they can cause a lot of symptoms and it causes a lot of people just to stop because they get afraid of those symptoms. Number two on our list is not eating enough leafy greens. Now, the ketogenic diet is a diet that is high fat, moderate protein, but the thing is is that when we look at leafy greens, we have to make sure we're eating a lot of them. We need these micronutrients when on the ketogenic diet. They're very important. And also, when you look at different leafy greens, they're very rich in these different minerals that are very important for us on the ketogenic diet. And so eating lots of leafy greens, starting your day out with a nice big salad, if you're doing intermittent fasting and keto, start your day out with a nice big salad, um, smoothies with lots of leafy greens. We want to make sure that we're getting lots of them in so that we get the micronutrients necessary in order to actually stay healthy while on the ketogenic diet. Next year is going to be calorie counting. Now I see a lot of people start the ketogenic diet and they're kind of stuck in this like old way of calorie counting when dieting and making sure that they fall into a calorie deficit. The thing is is that like when you look at the ketogenic diet versus like a low calorie diet, they're very different in how they act on the body. When you're following the ketogenic diet, like as long as you're not just, you know, blatantly overeating to a high extent, then you're going to start losing a lot of weight. The other thing about the ketogenic diet is it's not as necessary to calorie count. If you're eating till you're comfortable, if you're eating the correct foods, the weight will start to fall off. So don't get too caught up in calorie counting when on the ketogenic diet. And the other thing too is that you tend to just eat less when on the ketogenic diet because there's a satiety factor that comes with it, right? If you're just doing a low calorie diet, there's always a problem with feeling hungry. If you're following the ketogenic diet, there's this whole satiety factor that comes with it where you don't really get a lot of food cravings. And so don't get too caught up on this when you're following the ketogenic diet. Next is going to be not getting enough sleep. When you don't get enough sleep, you have an increase in stress. Increase in stress goes and causes all kinds of issues. I mean, have you ever been on a diet and then you have like multiple stressful days in a row and everything goes off the rails? Well, that is what tends to happen when on the ketogenic diet. You tend to, you know, just grab whatever foods in front of you. You tend to, you know, just uh, have this cortisol, which is going to be spiked and cause cravings and all kinds of issues for you, irritability. And so make sure that we're getting enough sleep so that we're not raising stress hormones in our body and causing failure while on the ketogenic diet. Next is hidden carbohydrates. This is a big one too because, you know, on the ketogenic diet you go and you, you, you know, a carb in many cases is a carb, right? You see a piece of bread, you go carb, right? But the carbs that are hidden are the ones that really mess you up. So for instance, if you go to a restaurant and there's sauces or, you know, you get different drinks that have, um, you know, hidden sugars in them. So you're going to have to watch out for all those hidden carbs that are going to be in sauces, condiments, and hidden in different drinks. Next is going to be too much dairy. Now, a lot of people get on the ketogenic diet and they're like dairy to the max. I mean, it's cheese, everything. Um, uh, high fat cream, all that. But the problem is, is that many people are sensitive to dairy. If you're very sensitive to dairy, then you're going to start having some inflammatory issues from it. You can have a lot of upset stomachs from it, and it's not going to sit well with you. And it can cause you to fail on the ketogenic diet because you may interpret that dairy sensitivity to just, well, the ketogenic diet doesn't work for me. I tried it, and all of these negative things happen. So we want to make sure that if we are someone who is sensitive to dairy, that we are not overdoing it on the ketogenic diet. And the other thing about dairy is that it is very uh, calorie dense and depending on what type of dairy you're utilizing, if it's like milk, I mean there is natural sugars in there that can disrupt your state of ketosis. And so keep that in mind and if you're having a reaction to the dairy, just take it out and then add it back in maybe a week later or if it's uh, something that doesn't sit well with you at all, just take it out completely. Next on our list is going to be too little protein. I have people all the time say to me, you know, I've been on the ketogenic diet for two months now. One of the big problems I'm having is my hair is falling out. And this is both women and men. Now, here's the thing about this here. A lot of people, they have this idea when on the ketogenic diet that they constantly just need to eat more fat but then restrict everything else and they tend to restrict protein too low. When you start restri restricting protein too low, it can cause cravings, it can cause, like I said, hair loss, it can cause all types of issues while on the ketogenic diet. Make sure that you're getting adequate protein while on the ketogenic diet in order to find good success with it. 
Next on our list is eating bad fats, okay? This kind of steps into that realm of dirty keto. When we look at dirty keto, eating bad fats is gonna be eating a lot of vegetable oils, eating a lot of uh, bacon, and bacon is fine on the ketogenic diet, but just not in high amounts. Um, and so we have to really watch out for these bad fats because they're highly inflammatory. If you're eating bad fats constantly on the ketogenic diet, it can cause all kinds of failure, but of course it can cause an inflammatory condition, which will stop you in blunt weight loss. And so. We want to make sure that we're doing our best to eat clean keto. We want to stay away from the fried foods, all that stuff. Now be sure to implement this information. Give this video a thumbs up. Put in the comment section below some of your favorite foods on the ketogenic diet. But what I also want to share with you is I did this very powerful video that teaches on bad fats and how they cause inflammation and how bad fats can actually cause insulin resistance. Can you imagine following the ketogenic diet and causing insulin resistance? Check out this video right over here. It's very powerful, very important for those who want to follow the ketogenic diet. We're going to talk about how inflammation actually causes insulin resistance. When we talk about these fats, we're talking about it from an inflammatory standpoint, right? 